will continue our discussion on IC engine and today we will work out a few example uh, from the from the different topics that we have discussed in the uh, last uh, you know couple of lectures. So, you know that uh, we have discussed if I try to recall that starting from the you know basic difference between spark ignition and compression ignition engine then 4 stroke 2 stroke engine we have discussed about the thermodynamic analysis of uh, different cycles like auto cycle, diesel cycles and dual cycles. Then we have discussed about the carburetor that is another important part of spark ignition engine because in a SI engine it is very difficult to it, it is used that the fuel and air will be supplied uh, into the cylinder during intake stroke instead of uh, only air uh, the case which is uh, you know occurring in a compression ignition engine. So, uh, and also we have discussed about the spark plug and then uh, how we can get uh, you know the voltage required to you know you know break the gap of huge resistance uh, to have a spark so that we can initiate combustion. Um, also we have discussed about the combustion about spark combustion combustion of the spark ignition and compression ignition engine separately then we have discussed about other different aspects like cooling then what are the fuel and what are the characteristics of a fuel. And then we have discussed about the SI engine injection system, also the injection system for the compression ignition engine. So, today I will work out a few examples which are pertinent uh, in the context of uh, SI, uh, you know, IC internal combustion engine. So, I will start my discussion with uh, one problem that I will solve. So, uh, we will work out one first problem. Uh, the first problem one very important that uh, a four stroke cycle CI engine, I am writing a uh, 4 stroke cycle SI engine CI engine has a brake thermal efficiency has a brake thermal efficiency efficiency of 32 percent. and a lower heat value of fuel is and fuel is 41200 kilojoule per kg. Calculate the brake specific fuel consumption and brake mean effective pressure of the engine if the volumetric efficiency is 76 percent, inlet density of the charge. So, we have to calculate, we have to calculate the brake specific fuel consumption, the brake specific fuel consumption. which is written B S F C in short and the brake mean effective pressure of the engine and brake mean effective pressure. We have discussed this uh, what is effect mean effective pressure and if I in, you know you know use B as a prefix then it becomes B M E P brake mean effective pressure if I use I that is indicated mean effective pressure like this. So, B M E P of the engine if the volumetric efficiency of the engine if the volumetric efficiency is 76 percent inlet density of charge is given and fuel air ratio is given so inlet density of charge inlet density of charge is 1.05 kg per meter cube and fuel air ratio is equal to 0 0.04. So, this is the problem we have to solution we have to find out the solution. So, this is the problem I can take that uh, you know specific heat of water and 1 kilo calorie. So, I can write uh, these data may be required. 1 horsepower equal to 75 kg force meter per second. Similarly, I can give 1 kilo calorie is equal to 427 kg force meter 
and specific and specific speed of water specific heat of water is equal to is equal to 4.217 kilo joule sorry kilo joule per kg kelvin kg kelvin so these are the uh, you know important you know parameter the uh, which may be required while solving problems uh, of internal combustion engine so now from this solution it is given that eta thermal 32 percent brake thermal efficiency brake thermal efficiency because it is very difficult because i know we have discussed that the power which is produced on the top of the piston face is known as indicated power but the power we get at the shaft is brake power because we need to overcome the frictional losses when you know piston is moving up and do down between uh, two locations that is top dead center and the bottom dead center. So, maybe because of the combustion we are having we are getting certain amount of thrust, but that thrust is not getting into converted to the work network which we are getting from the engine because uh, some amount is lost to overcome the frictional losses. So, that is why brake thermal efficiency is given 32 percent. And it is given that the lower heat value of the fuel that is given 41,200 kilo joule per kg and also eta volumetric it is given that uh, 76 percent and so we have to calculate. So, no I, brake specific fuel consumption BSFC is very important that is mass flow rate of fuel divided by you know brake mass flow rate of fuel divided by brake work that is you know uh, rate of fuel flow into the engine rate of fuel flow into the engine divided by brake power so bsfc brake specific fuel consumption is mass rate of fuel flow into the engine divided by brake power so maybe to obtain how much the, what is the brake power that you are getting and to obtain what is the mass flow rate of fuel is required the ratio of these two quantities i mean m dot f by w is a brake specific fuel consumption so that is equal to you know uh, w brake divided by mass flow rate of fuel into this uh, you know if I multiply mass flow rate of fuel into uh, I can write now it uh, in a bit I can rearrange this term in different way W B divided by brake power divided by m dot f into heat heat value of the fuel heat value of the fuel. So, we have to multiply we, we are we have to multiply again. So, heat value of of fuel. So, that is 1 by this quantity is essentially the thermal efficiency eta thermal into heat value of the fuel. So, we are getting 1 by 0 0.32 into 41200 and ultimately you are getting 0 0.2 kg per bhp hour. Uh, if I make it in conversion, ultimately this quantity will be equal to uh, 7.58 into 10 power minus 5 kg kilo joule and then from there we can calculate in, in terms of break you know uh, HP because uh, from conversion we can calculate that 0 0.2 uh, kg per bhp hour. Now, it is given that volumetric efficiency. So, what is volumetric efficiency? Volumetric efficiency we have to calculate mean effective pressure. So, what is volumetric efficiency is very important. Volumetric efficiency eta V is equal to mass flow rate of air divided by rho A into V at V D C. You know that uh, see uh, we have discussed this issue perhaps in the context of discussion that what is the mass flow rate of air and divided by rho a into v v d c that is the uh, what is a it is again some mass amount of you know volumetric volume flow rate. So, these two are not equal certain amount will be there. So, m dot a divided by rho a v v d c this is the volumetric efficiency and it is very important m dot f by w b 
is equal to so and we have calculated that m dot f by break power is equal to 7.58 into 10 power minus 5 right so from there uh, is equal to so from here i can calculate m dot a by v b d c is equal to eta v into rho a that is what you are getting and this is from equation 1 right uh, and so therefore mass flow rate of fuel divided by mass flow rate of air that equal to 7.58 into 10 power minus 5 divided by you know uh, because mass flow rate of air we can calculate that is what is mass flow rate of air because it is given that the problem if I try to recall the problem it is given that what is the mass flow rate of m dot a density is given right. So, we can calculate mass flow rate of air from there. So, it is coming around 0 0.76 into 1.05 why 0 0.76 because 76 percent is the volumetric efficiency. So, m dot f by m dot a is equal to uh, 7.58 into 10 power minus 5 divided by 7.76 into actually if I do like this I mean if this is equation 2 and this is equ equation 1 then if I divided equation 2 by equation 1 we get like this. So, m dot f by m dot you know by 2 divided by 1 we get m dot f by m dot 1 will be equal to this quantity and then p mean effective p mean pressure will be equal to w b divided by v b d c. So, that will be equal to 0 0.04 into 0 0.76 into 1.05 divided by 7.58 into 10 power minus 5. So, uh, from there we can calculate because W b that is the that I can calculate because W b will be equal to if, if I rearrange uh, in fact uh, using equation 2 and 1 then I can calculate that V b d c. In fact, I need not to write this expression again rather if I can just calculate that if I write P mean is equal to W b by V d c. So, mean effective pressure. So, that is 0 0.04 if I write the expression of W b from equation 1 that is using equation 1 and 2 using equations 1 and 2. So, m dot f divided by 7.58 m dot f by m dot a that is essentially um, uh, that is given 0 0.04 because uh, you know uh, that uh, fuel air ratio is 0 0.04 and uh, from there I can calculate what will be mean effective pressure that is coming 0 0.42 mega Pascal. So, this is the final answer of this first problem. Okay. So, now we will move to solve another problem that uh, problem 2 this is very important that a 4 stroke 4 cylinder engine I am writing a 4 cylinder 4 stroke SI engine 4 cylinder 4 stroke SI engine. 4 cylinder 4 stroke SI engine uh, has the following particular data. What is that? Bore, bore is given 6.5 centimeter, right? Uh, stroke is given, stroke is given 9.5 centimeter, speed is given is equal to 3000 rpm, and clearance volume Vc. V c that is clearance volume clearance volume is given uh, 65 you know centimeter cube relative efficiency based on the brake thermal efficiency. So, this is uh, eta brake thermal relative uh, eta brake thermal rather relative eta brake thermal that is given you know uh, 50 percent heating value of fuel is given heating 
heating value of fuel 11000 kelvin kilo calorie per kg when tested on load it develops 7 kg force meter torque so when tested it develops you know uh, 7 meter torque uh, we have to calculate specific fuel consumption at the brake mean effective pressure so bsfc brake specific fuel consumption and brake mean effective pressure so these two quantities we need to calculate so these will be um, equal to how much and this is how much so these two quantities you need to calculate so you know for now we can proceed to solve so we can start solution solving so it is given torque is given torque is equal to 7 kg force meter that is equal to 750 uh, sorry 75 I think it is given torque is given 0.69 MPa um, 75 not 7 so 75 kg force meter but then 75 kg force meter that is 750 Newton uh, meter is given. So, what is brake power? If I know the torque brake power, if I try to recall that is equal to twice pi n t divided by 60. So, that is twice pi into RPM is given 3000 into 750 divided by 60 into 10 cube because that is you know uh, we are obtaining uh, 23561 kilowatt. So, this is the we are getting brake power. So, brake mean effective pressure therefore, brake mean effective pressure will be equal to uh, brake mean effective pressure BMEP equal to brake power into 2 divided by area into length into n in number of cylinders. So, this is area into length into n into number of cylinder. So, brake power into 2 because uh, why you are multiplying 2 it is given 4 stroke 4 cylinder 4 stroke SI engine because in a power in a cycle there are 2 revolution of the crank. So, the brake mean effective pressure will be like this and if we try to calculate if I know everything and it will be. Uh, so, this will be equal to you know brake power it is 235.61 into 10 cube watt into twice into uh, you know um, uh, this is divided by what is area pi by 4 into it is given 0 0.065 area into length that is the uh, stroke st you know board is given no board is given 6.5 centimeter. So, this is 0 0.065 square into 9.5 9 into 10 power minus 2 that is 9.5 is the stroke that is given L uh, into 3000 is the RPM and number of cylinder is equal to 4 you know that is given. So, uh, if I divide it into 1 by 10 power 5, then perhaps we will get this is 74.74 bar. So, this is the mean effective pressure. Now, we have to calculate the brake specific fuel consumption that is another important thing. So, you know that uh, we know that mass flow rate of fuel that will be equal to specific fuel consumption rate into brake power. So, uh, you know mass flow rate of fuel equal to 53.485. Uh, so, from there because mass flow rate of fuel we can calculate uh, uh, from the uh, how can I calculate mass flow rate of fuel 53.48650 uh, it is given that the you know uh, heating value of the fuel is given. So, from there specific fuel consumption that will be calculated mass flow rate of fuel divided by uh, brake power brake power. So, mass flow rate of fuel it is 53.485 divided by brake power that is given uh, 
5 into 6194. So, this will come around 0 0.227 kg per bhp hour. So, uh, this is the expression for the you know big specific fuel consumptions, but uh, we have to uh, you know uh, this is the total expression for the uh, I mean expression for the brake specific fuel consumption and the brake mean effective pressure we have calculated. So, mass flow rate of the fuel how can we calculate mass flow rate of the fuel because uh, the brake thermal efficiency is given 50 percent. So, from there we can calculate mass flow rate of fuel. So, I did not solve that part because brake thermal efficiency relative that is given 50, per 50 uh, percent from there we can calculate and heating value is given. So, this mass flow rate of fuel this quantity so m dot f can be calculated I am not solving this calculated from uh, relative efficiency relative brake thermal efficiency and and the uh, heating value of the fuel heating value of fuel so from there we can calculate mass flow of fuel probably i am not going to discuss the, the same part i have discussed in the context of the solution of the last part so how can i calculate mass flow of fuel because uh, there i i can obtain the specific fuel consumption rate and this is bsfc because i have divided with the brake power the, the specific fuel consumption whatever i have calculated that is essentially brake specific fuel consumption because i have divided by brake power okay now uh, we will solve another problem that is uh, related to one carburation so i have to solve one problem that is related to carburation then uh, we will solve on i see i you know ci engine fuel injection and uh, so and then problem on carburation so i can solve in fact uh, carburation problem i have solved a uh, problem so i am not going to solve carburation problem carburation problem i have solved one or two problem i have solved uh, while i have discussed about the carburetor so straight away i can discuss another problem on ci engine fuel injections so problem on ci engine fuel injection so i now solve that CI engine fuel injection system CI engine fuel injection system right uh, so the fuel pump we have a fuel pump fuel pump the volume of the fuel in the pump barrel before commencement of the effective stroke is 7 cc so it is given volume of the fuel in the pump barrel before commencement commencement of the effective stroke of the effect effective stroke is 7 cc it is given the fuel line from the pump to the injector is 3 millimeter in diameter and 700 millimeter long so uh, fuel line fuel supply line from the pump into the fuel uh, to injector to injector is 3 millimeter dia and 700 millimeter long and the amount of fuel in the injection valve is 3 cc amount of fuel in the inject in the injection valve is 3 cc the pump should deliver pump should deliver 0 0.15 cc of fuel at 200 kg force per centimeter square the sum pressure is sum pressure is 1 kg force per centimeter square the coefficient of compressibility of the fuel the coefficient of compressibility 
of fuel is 78.8 into 10 power minus 6 kg 4 per centimeter square. Diameter of the pump flanger, the dia of pump plunger is 8 millimeter. Determine the displacement volume and effective stroke of the plunger. Determine the displacement volume and the effective stroke of the plunger. So, we have to calculate. So, this is the problem associated with the individual pump and injection system that is what we have discussed. So, now we have to solve this problem, very important problem. So, we have to solve, how can I solve? So, uh, solution is I can calculate volume of volume of fuel in the fuel line. We have to calculate volume of fuel in the fuel line is equal to pi by 4 into d square into L. So, therefore, pi by 4 into 3 square into 700 that is coming 4948.00 millimeter cube that is 4.948 cc. So, this is the volume of the fuel in the fuel line. So, the total initial volume total initial volume is equal to V1 is equal to volume of fuel in the barrel pump barrel plus volume of fuel in the fuel line plus volume of fuel in the valve. So, these three are the volume. So, if I add this three we will get 7 plus 4.9 for 8 plus 3 that is 14.948 cc. So, this is the total initial volume. Now, delivery pressure P2 200 kg force per centimeter square and inlet pressure inlet pressure P1 is equal to 1 kg force per centimeter square. Therefore, P2 minus P1 that equal to 199 kg force per centimeter square. So, 199 into 9.81 divided by 10 power minus 2 square, I can calculate 195.219 bar. So, this is the P1 minus P2. So, change in volume due to compression that is change in volume. We have to we are compressing the liquid, so there will be change in volume. So, change in volume due to compression that is why it is given the you know the problem it is given the coefficient of compressibility of the fuel. So, coefficient of compressive fuel is given. So, that is equal to k. So, v 2 minus sorry v 1 minus v 2 divided by v 1 into p 2 minus p 1. So, from there I can calculate what is. Uh, so, k is equal to given 7.88 into 10 power minus 6 is equal to v 1 minus v 2 divided by v 1 into p 2 minus p 1. So, that is uh, v 1 minus v 2 initial volume v that is what I have calculated 14.948 cc into p 2 minus p 1 that is what we have calculated 199 kg 4 per centimeter square. So, from there I can easily calculate v 1 minus v 2 that equal to 0.2344 cc. So, this is the uh, you know change in volume due to the compression. So, from we have calculated from the you know compressibility of the fuel it is given the total displacement of the plunger therefore, total displacement of the plunger of the plunger that is important pump plunger that is V1 minus V2 that change in volume plus plus delivery volume. So, the change in volume in the V1 that is V1 minus V2 of the fuel plus the delivery volume. So, that is 0 0.2344 plus 0 0.15 cc. So, this is coming 0 0.3844 cc. So, this is the total displacement of the plunger because delivery volume is 0.15 cc that is given in the problem. Now, the effective stroke that is we have to calculate. So, effective stroke that effect say effective stroke is 
if a effective stroke let us say this is L. Therefore, displacement volume V d is equal to 0 0.3844 cc in a, in a stroke. So, pi by 4 into d square into L that equal to 0 0.3844. So, we have a stroke length of the pump that is true, but what is the effective stroke to obtain that amount of fuel to be supplied considering the compressibility effect of the fuel. Then d is given uh, pi by 4. So, pi by 4 into effective stroke of the plunger that you have to calculate because diameter of the pump plunger is given d that is 8 millimeter. So, 0 0.8 into 0 0.8 into L is equal to 3 0 0.3844. So, from there I can calculate L is equal to 0 0.747647 uh, that is 0 centimeter that is 0 0.76 centimeter. So, these two are the answer for the problem. Okay. And the last problem I will solve is very important that uh, related to problem on conversion. So, the last problem I will solve problem 4 that is problem on conversion. So, it is a given that uh, SI engine spark plug a spark plug is fired it is given at 180 degree before TDC whenever uh, sorry 80 degree before TDC sorry 80 degree 18 degree before TDC. When piston is 18 degree before TDC then spark plug is fired in a in a SI engine running at 1800 rpm it takes 8 degree of crank rotation to start combustion to start combustion and get into flame propagation mode and get into flame propagation mode that means spark plug is fired at 18 degree before TDC in an SI engine running at 1800 rpm it takes 8 degree of crank rotation to start combustion and get into flame propagation mode. This is very important that maybe when piston is 18 degree before TDC then we spark fire the spark plug, but even after when piston is travelling from TDC and 8, 8 degree crank rotation then combustion starts and we get a visible flame fine. So, uh, flame termination occur at 120 degree at TDC. So, flame termination occur at 120 degree after TDC, A TDC. Cylinder bore is cylinder bore is 8.4 centimeter and the spark plug is offset by 8 millimeter from the center line of the cylinder and the spark plug is offset by 8 millimeter from the center line of the cylinder. The flame front can be approximated as sphere, the flame front can be approximated as a sphere moving out moving out of this spark plug calculate the effective flame front speed speed during the flame front propagation during its propagation So, this is the problem we have to solve, right. How can I solve? So, it is solution, it is given that spark ignition occurs at 18 degree TDC. So, ignition start, so ignition start, ignition start at 18 degree minus 8 degree that is 10 degree before TDC. 
spark plug is fired 18 degree TDC and it takes 18 degree, 8 degree of crank rotation to start combustion. But that means maybe we have started it when piston is away from 18 degree away from BDC, TDC, but eventually the ultimate frame starts when it is uh, eight, 8 degree air from the TDC. So, eventually ignition start at 10 degree uh, before TDC and flame termination at 12 degree after TDC. So, this is rotational angle for the flame propagation. So, rotational angle for flame propagation is is 12 degree minus minus 10 degree that is 22 degree. So, this is the flame propagation which is equivalent to the injection period in a CI engine. So, ignition start when piston is 18 degree away from TDC, I mean bottom TDC, below TDC, but ultimately flame start at when it is 8 degree out TDC. So, flame termination, so the total ignition start when it is 10 degree at the below TDC and termination occurs when it is 12 degree after TDC. So, the total angle of rotational angle during the flame propagation is 22 degree flame rotation. So, total therefore, that is what the total time of flame propagation, flame propagation that is what we have calculated again in my last two lectures that is uh, theta divided by 6 into n. Therefore, theta is 22 degree divided by you know uh, n uh, is it is uh, uh, it is given 1800 rpm. So, it is 1800 divided by 60 into or I can state right uh, 6 cents it, this will be second 6 into 1800 second. So, it is coming 2.037 into 10 power minus 3 second. So, this is the total time of flame propagation. Now, uh, this is the total time of flame propagation and ultimately I can now obtain the flame speed the time I have obtained. So, maximum flame travel distance I now have to calculate maximum flame travel distance how much that is bore by 2 bore by 2 plus offset so it is you have we are, we are approximating it is a last like you know spherical uh, sphere moving so bore by 2 plus offset is a maximum flame travel distance and that is coming 0 0.084 by 2 plus 0 0.008 that is 0 0.05 meter so effective flame speed is equal to 0 0.05 divided by 2.037 into 10 power minus 3 that is 24.55 meter per second. So, this is another answer. So, the maximum flame travel distance is offset because spark plug is it is given the spark plug is offset 8 millimeter from the center line of the cylinder and what is the bore? Bore by 2 is the total flame speed flame travel distance. So, now bore by 2 plus offset is the total maxim the maximum flame travel distance and if I, I have I know the distance I know the total you know uh, flame total time t because total time of flame propagation. So, there I can calculate the velocity. So, with this I stop my discussion today and we have uh, probably this is the last class of this uh, lecture uh, this course particular this last lecture of, of for this course and we have discussed theoretical part as well as I have today solved a few examples which will help you uh, to uh, work out or rather to practice and we will provide a, a, you know assignment and thus worked out example to whatever I have done today that will help you to solve the problem uh, from the assignment. So, uh, uh, with this theoretical part as well as this you know uh, a few example that we have solved during my discussion of theory, theory of this particular course as well as today's uh, worked out example uh, I am I am uh, completing this uh, course. And I hope that you have enjoyed this course a uh, lot and you will, you will learn uh, a few things at least related to internal combustion engine operation as well as the you know it uh, a few aspects of it design. So, with this I stop my discussion today and uh, then we will provide the assignment and the some worked out example. Thank you very much.